goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. We've been working toward uh, one lucky MC being crowned as the partner's official top MC of the 2000s. So this is every MC from the year 2000 until now. Who is the number one guy? Who's that? Um, so we started by just establishing who have been actual MCs, who have not just been great artists, amazing artists, but may have not fit in our criteria. And our criteria that we use was marketability, um, how well you can earn money, um, how well your records sell, how well your shows sell, how well your merch sells, how much brand deals you get, how much, much exposure you're given, how well you're able to market yourself and create a buzz around your product. Um, the second criteria was lyricism. How well you put words together. How, um, how high level are your syllable combinations? How high level are your rhyme schemes, flow patterns, and cadences used? How do you, how well do you put together your figurative language, your idioms, similes, metaphors, um, entendres, um, all of these colloquialisms? How, how do you use these witty word plays to paint a picture? Um, and then lastly was stage performance, emceeing. How much do you rock a crowd? When someone goes to your show, when someone hears you performing, when you perform a freestyle on Hot 9-7, how do you get across your message? How are you actually controlling and commanding a room and or crowd? Um, now, part of lyricism was you could not have had a ghostwriter or a known ghostwriter, at least. So people like Drake, um, yeah. People like that were just not even allowed. Kanye, people like that were just not allowed just because they've had writers. So even though they are amazing artists and could be established for that, for top MCs, they just were disqualified. Um, so once we established our list, we had about 21 people that we put on there. Um, and then we started bracketing. Now the brackets were kind of done at random. Um, so last week we had the opening round. Um, and basically how we've done this and how we've decided to establish these brackets is the brackets were established. We had our opening round. And what we've done is we debate based on those three criteria and we vote for who we think out of the two people in that particular bracket go on to the next round. What we've also done, though, we have an online bracket that the pod squad has been voting on. And we use their votes. Their votes counts as two partners. So officially, we have five partners voting on each round. Now, after the three of us have given our particular choice as far as who we think and why we think this person should move on to the next round, we will then add in the pod squad's two votes for their particular choice for that round. And whoever receives at least three out of five votes will move on to the next round. Now, the opening play-in round, we decided ourselves. From there, the pod squad has already cast their votes, and we have their official votes as far as who they think should move on to the next round. So I have those listed here in front of me. And now we look at our bracket from this week. We're now in round two, and we're about to decide the quarterfinal round for the top MCs of the 2000s. So... Um, I'm going to share this. Hopefully I do this right. Y'all know I be struggling sometimes with technology, guys. Um, but give me a second. So, um, yeah, guys, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? <laughs> Yo, I knew y'all was going to do it with me. I knew I wasn't going to be by myself. I knew I wasn't going to be by myself. I knew I, somebody was going to come in with the ignorant shit. Um, <laughs> so let's see if this screen share. Can y'all see my screen right now? I see oh, yeah. your screen. Beautiful, right now. beautiful, beautiful. Give me one second. Let me make sure the people at home are actually going to be able to see us by making sure I got this up. Bet it. Bet it. Don't sweat it. Your boy Tiz actually did it right, y'all. I actually did it right. 
All right. All right. So now that y'all can see the brackets here, as y'all can see, the opening rounds, we had uh, Tobin Igwe moving on to face Kendrick Lamar in the mm. in round two, or the, the first official round, we should say. We have Rick Ross facing Wale. We had Conway the Machine beating Fabulous, so he's now facing off against Pusha T this week. We had uh, Schoolboy Q in an upset against Lupe Fiasco. This one probably hurt me more than any of them last week. Um, I got outvoted, though. Um, so Schoolboy Q is now going off against Royce the 5'9". Oh, hip-hop Surprisingly. head. going to be with me this week. Um, we then had Killer Mike in a, in a close victory over Childish Gambino. Um, so he's facing Damn. off against Joe Budden this week. We got J. Cole versus Beanie Siegel. I'm interested to hear what my other two partners um, have to say on that one. Uh, we got Big Sean uh-huh. facing off against Chance the Rapper. And we have Nicki Minaj, who beat out Meg Mill, which is hilarious to me. Um, yeah. Still be facing off this week against 2 Chains. Hip-hop heads, I hope y'all with me this week. Um, Yo, I'm, I'm kind of mad that we don't have we don't have Lupe versus Royce. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I'm kind of mad about that. Y'all thing. voted, but y'all did this. I know. I know. You did this. I know. Is this your king? But yeah, so that's where we at with it for this week, fams. Um, we're gonna get right off into it, and let's talk about Kendrick Lamar versus Tobin Negue. All right. We have I'll to, start we have it off first, just because I feel like I know what this is going to go. I feel like I know what the pod squad said. I feel like I just got this pretty much. I already know how this is going to be. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to start off by just saying I love Toby Nigue. He's probably one of my favorite artists out, period. Um, probably even over Kendrick, as far as who I would just like to listen to more. Uh, love his message. Love the fact that he doesn't have to curse to get his rhymes out on lyricism. Um, on lyricism, I would actually personally give this a draw, but I know people are going to look at me like I'm a three-eyed monster. But yeah, I personally gave this a draw. On uh, marketability, I definitely gave this to Kendrick. I'm not delusional. Um, Kendrick is fucking box office. He's one of the top three hip hop artists, period. So yeah, no, no delusions winner. there. Um, <laughs> and then as far as stage show, I actually gave it to Toby. Like I feel like Kendrick is real good at having people behind him. I feel like as far as like straight freestyle, them just just them and a mic. I feel like they both about equal. But when you get onto a stage show and who can with just them and a microphone, give me more. I feel like Toby can give me more because he can put on a whole dance routine to his shit and all that and add in that aspect as well as the actual just straight MCing and barn. Whereas Kendrick is just going to be to give me barn while his backup dancers and stuff do crazy shit behind him or like explosions go off or a scene behind him is set. But I don't feel like pound for pound they do. So I had it as a draw. So that's where I'm going to stand. So I'm going to give both of them a vote on behalf of me. <laughs> and now I open up the floor to the, to the people who are less delusional than me. Maybe it's the meds I'm on. Maybe I'm crazy. But that's what I had. So y'all Maybe. can go. Face go first. Face go first. So um, I'm going to say Toby definitely rocks the crowd. Um, better than Kendrick, in my in my opinion, um, I can get behind Toby's performance a little bit more. Um, I feel both of them when they're giving their performance, but it's something about a top performance that draws your soul in. You feel me? Like some you 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 feel like you're a part of it. So I'm gonna give that category to Toby. Um, lyrics. Um, I know I can't have it as a tie, but the only reason that I could give it to Kendrick is because of his marketability. So his lyrics are heard more and touch more people as far as quantity. But as far as 
lyrical quality to me, I'm going to say Toby because, once again, he does have that ability to display that message in depth and as hood as he want to be without cursing. And mm-hmm. to me personally, that really that that takes a, a a different type of pen. Anybody can throw some up with a curse word in it, and damn right, I feel that. But to artistically articulate a point without having to use any vulgar vulgar words, but you can still paint that picture with that same emotion as you did use them. That's a different level to me. So I give it a Toby on lyrics. So I mean. Out of, the, out of the three categories, I'm going with Toby. Two out of three. Hey! <laughs> All right. Pat? All right. So, I really can't... The way I listen to music now, I really feel like this is unfair on my end as far on Toby's side because how to say Man, I'll speak wait. your speech Pat I'll wait for the song to hit me like I'm waiting for the Toby song that actually hits me you know what I'm saying that's fair or whatever and it's just so much music out there that I haven't been able to keep up with with Toby I usually go to my normal mainstays and go around it because I just don't have time to like listen to music like I used to right. or whatever so like on my end, I'm probably going to just go ahead and put in for like Kendrick because just off of the ignorance that I have for Toby, whatever. Like this, what I've listened to before, I like, I liked it and I respect it when I just listen to it bar for bar and listen to what he says or whatever. But I feel like I only liked it because somebody told me about it that I'm cool with. So Got it. I'm I'm waiting. You don't have that for, organic bond to anything. Yeah, I haven't had that organic bond yet, and I don't want to just say I that's like fair. Toby because everybody else like Toby. I feel like that's disrespectful to Toby. That's fair. That's you know? fair. So you that's like why I'm, fair, bro. I'm like one sided on Kendrick or whatever. So um, really, I haven't. Well, I have seen Toby perform. Or whatever. I just haven't seen him as much as I've seen Kendrick, or whatever. So that's why I'm I'm like really one sided on the Kendrick thing, or okay. whatever. And I mean, it's still artists like Toby that I really haven't got into that everybody's telling me I should get into yet, or mm-hmm. whatever. But mm, it's just I haven't got into that phase yet. That's all. Just give me some time. I was the same way with Drake. No, I, no, I was the first person to tell people about Drake. I was the same way about shit, Pusha T, a couple of other rappers. Lil Wayne, right. I, I had to grow into him or whatever, so I feel like it's one of those things that I just gotta wait to grow into Toby uh, music, pretty much. So your official vote is? It's Kendrick. It's Kendrick. No problem, because... um. Yeah, this is where the pod squad definitely felt you. Um, yeah, it was overwhelming. It's Kendrick. <laughs> um, so K- Kendrick definitely won that round. That's why I wanted to go first. Just so uh, Toby, you heard me. Me and Face had your back there, bro. We we was we was rooting for you. We we just got out outvoted by a lot in a lot, as uh, Sir, Sue Surf was saying. We got outvoted in a lot. So um, yeah. <laughs> Um, the next round here, Rick Ross versus Wale, label mates when label mates become enemies. Anybody want to take the floor first on this? I will. Go then, my brother. All uh, right. So straight out lyrically, Wale. I'm going to just go straight up like that. Okay. But his marketability and where it should be at. Because of his lyrical ability. Which sounds crazy. Because you would think if you are a good lyricist, you would sell more records. But I don't know. It's 
if it's the the label push behind him or what it is, but marketability, he ain't there. Hands down, Rick Ross has the marketability. Um, regardless of what scandal is being or what, Ross' name out there somewhere, you know, involved in something, he definitely has the marketability hand down. Not to say while he does not have marketability, he does have that damn lyrical ability, though. Now, when it comes to stage performance, I really don't know. About equal to me. Um, energy put into the performance about equal. Um, the visual effect, uh, of course, you're going to get more of Ross because um, he's a big boss on the label, so you're going to get more of the visual effect, more of that Rick Ross swag on the, on his performance. On Wale, you got more of that that DMV style. So I don't really know it's a toss-up on performance and giving giving it to the crowd. It's really a toss-up on that one with me. Um, just because I fuck with Wale a little bit better, I, I'm going to go with Wale. So that's my vote. Okay. So Wale and, on the board. And let, me just say this, and let me just say this. Rick Ross is one of my favorite rappers. But I did not this, know that. The shit I be learning about my best friends on this podcast. <laughs> I just like the slow flow. Give him a slow flow rap. Go slow flow rap like. I can see that. But in this category, I'm going to go with Wale. Right on. So that's my vote. Pat? All your right. Your vote? Marketing, I feel like, goes with Rick Ross because Rick Ross has a whole fucking company. <laughs> Pretty much. So, yeah, that kind of goes with him. Um, Lyricism. Yeah. Lyricism, I'm going to go with Wale. Even though I like Rick Ross more. Like, Rick Ross is very good at, like, setting the tone the setting giving you like the movie feel with a song or whatever but he how to say he don't have like that I'm about to just go the fuck in you know what I'm saying I could always go to him for some like don't get me wrong he got some lines and bars or whatever when he say and he be saying some real shit from time to time or whatever but I don't go to Rick Ross to like go in on a freestyle as much as I can go in with Wale. Now with Wale, his music to me doesn't connect with me or whatever. Like I feel like a lot of times, I don't know. And it's just something about him just seemed like it's like extra. And then like his girl songs and stuff like that, it just seemed like, yeah, you're trying to get a bag with this. But at the same time, like every time I hear him on a feature, he goes the fuck in on a feature. Like I love what listening to Wale on features than I do on his actual music for real, to tell you the truth. Um stage performance. How <sighs> put this way. I want to give this round to Rick Ross because I like Rick Ross music better. But <laughs> but I just feel like Wale would give me a whole lot more energy on stage. Just because his background his background is DMV. That's DC music. DC music is nothing but high energy music or whatever. Yeah. I can understand. I was, I was really thinking I was going to give this to Rick Ross, but <laughs> one out of two, I'm giving it to Wale, man. Wow. Go Wally. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this, this is one... from a person that don't really listen to Wale. I listen to Rick Ross more than I listen to Wale. Right. So it's, it's, it's throwing me off, but now, I don't know if I should do this because I, obviously I have the list of who the pod squad actually picked. So I know mm-hmm. which way this is going to go already. Um, I think I do too. So I don't know if I should put myself on the high seat as the tiebreaker or not. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it and then 
let y'all see what the tie would have been. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck it. The pod squad pick Rose. Hmm. I'll be the tiebreaker. This was tough for me because I like these rappers for all of the reasons that you both outlined them. Like, Rick Ross speaks to a very specific time in my life that I still kind of have emotions around and, like, thoughts around. So, like, there's a resonance there with him that's, like, very deep to me. Like, there's certain songs like that. Um, anything off the Port of Miami album? Yep. Every day I'm hustling. That, that, that talks Every to day me. I'm hustling. For real, for real. So, like, it was tough. Because also Wale, he has that DMV vibe. He gives you that go-go feel. Um, and his lyrics relate to me on a level of, like, just being an everyday guy, hollering at girls, like, the struggle of being in relationships, the kind of being awkward at times, being an introvert. Like, he speaks to a lot of things that are also just very much me. Um but I actually gave the lyricism to Rosé. Um, I feel like Ross can talk about everything that Wale can talk about, but Wale can't talk about everything Ross can talk about. And I think that versatility is where I draw the line. Um, lyrically, they have very different styles. Um, but as far as bar for bar, like the way they use words is different. I think that Wale is more into entendres and metaphors. Whereas to um, Rosé is more on into similes and um, witty wordplay, like playing off of clever um, life lesson lines or like, you know, cliches that everybody knows, but he finds a clever way to kind of flip it. Um, I feel like that's more his lane, but I feel like they're both equal as far as being proficient at it. Um, but Ross, man, he's just versatile, man. Like he has more places he can go as far as his lyrical content than Wale can and still be believable as an MC. So lyrically, I'm going to go Rosé. Um, stage performance, I actually got Wale just because I love go-go music and the fact that he uses a lot of live instrumentation and often gets into go-go pockets and puts that to those type of beats to a lot of his songs on his albums that normally would not have those beats. I rock with shit like that because, you know, I'm from Virginia and a big part of my party scene, especially in college, was go-go music. So I love that. So I gave that to Wale. Um, and then as far as marketability, it's not even close. Wale's awkwardness is um, the way he presents socially, his lack of his, his lack of tact at times so socially. Yeah, and the fact that he sometimes. doesn't have the budget that Rose has, Rose gets it. So I had to give it to Rose. And he don't have the budget to, to to say the shit that he be saying and get away with it. Like Rose do. Indeed. So, so um Rose moves on. There you go. Um for this next one. Conway the machine versus push up T. Hoy! Um, I'll start this all, man. I'm from Virginia and ain't shit to do but cook. Um, mm -hmm. I'm giving the lyricism to push. Um, again, it goes down to versatility to me. Conway the Machine to me is like your typical street rapper. But I cannot see him rapping to me about just regular everyday life shit and me it, it having the same resonance because he's established himself too much into one identity lyrically. So I'm going to go with Pusha T lyrically just because as far as like bar for bar, I feel like they, they have equal talent, but the longevity, the versatility, and the fact that I've seen more from Pusha T lyrically just gives it to him from me. Marketability, I'm definitely going to say um, Pusha T. Um, he has more big name pushes. And he has the budget being the president of a label. He has the budget in his fingertips to market himself however he wants to, whenever he feels. Um, 
his album sales have definitely always been pretty decent. Um, he's always going at least gold. Usually that's usually his standard. Um, and as far as battling goes, you know what I'm saying? Which is one of those great lyrical contests. I feel like he's more battle tested. He's actually had to go at greats. He's had to go at one of the greatest artists of the 2000s in Drake. He's had to go at one of the greatest rappers uh of any era Lil Wayne you know what I mean so like when you look at those contests and he's actually held his own in both I gotta give it to Pusha T uh lyrically and marketability wise he just has a bigger budget um he's known by more people like he's been around longer so he just has that longevity factor whereas he's had longer time to get international acclaim and I think that a lot of these contests, especially now that we're getting into the elite of the elites, it's going to come down to like bigger than our small U.S. bubble. It's going to come down to like if I go to Brazil, what's the likelihood of a random kid there knowing who you are? Even if they may not know your song for song, they know who you are. Who's more likely to have that happen? And I feel like Pusha T is there. So marketability, I'm going with Pusha. So I'm already up 2-1 on Pusha. I ain't going to even go into the stage show because I don't really know a lot about Conway stage show. But since I'm up pusher already to one, I'll just stop there. My vote pusher T. Well, I'll take this. Grinding. Um, I'm a Virginia head. I'm kind of biased. That's all that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm gonna be honest. It's just like with my Barack Obama vote. I was biased. He was black. I was black. I was. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm kind of biased. Um, if you put Pusha up against anybody else that ain't on my top tier, just top tier, I'm gonna go with him just because I'm biased with the whole thing. But lyrically, I'm gonna give it to him because he's once again tried and tested, been there and back. I can do the group thing. I can do the solo thing. Then I can come in, I can do the collaboration thing as well. Then I can also do a solo thing. I'm seeing Pusha on a different level. You feel me? Like, and he's not reached his peak yet. And look how long he's been out. Lyrically, he's still maturing. And you have to be a certain caliber to be where you can still be great and still mature as well and still learn and still sharpen your tools. And I see that in him because even though he comes out sporadically, when he does come out, it ain't the same type of shit. Even he gives you something different. He gives you more work, but he gives you something something different that's going to make you like, damn, push it, you did the key. Um, stage show, once again, DMV, I'm from VA. I, I, I go with the DMV field more, more than other motherfucking places. <laughs> uh, I think it to your explanation about Ross over Wale. Um, Conway can do everything Pusha do. I mean, I'm sorry. Other way around. You feel me? You know what I'm trying to fucking say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Push is greater and can do more. He's more versatile. He got more tricks of the ain't, ain't none of us going like, lyricists of the night mm-hmm. tonight. Mm-hmm. Hands down. I mean, I'm not even I'm not even gonna go to all three categories. I'm gonna just say push your team, man. He got my vote three. <laughs> he he just thirty kind of way to be. Um when you announced who was going against each other, I already I already had it last week when you said I was like, oh, I know who I'm voting for. Shit, they don't even know think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, comment back. I don't know what the fuck you want to, but it is what it is. Yo, I'm I know the comments shit. gonna light up on on face ass when they when they hear that. <laughs> they be like, "Oh, could you even take this seriously when one of them says it?" <laughs> At least I'm honest about my shit. You <laughs> feel? I could have hit it and be like, you know what? No, I'm gonna just go this and laugh. No, I'm gonna push it to your hands down because I'm gonna be a bound. But at the end of the day, look at them lyric, lyric, lyric. You're gonna give it to push it. 
look at marketability. <laughs> You're going to give it to push it. He got the tag team flow once again. Let the clips come out with an owl. Let them get back together and put the album out. I guarantee. That will shake the building. It's going to shake the fucking building. But then again, let Pusha put the album out by himself. And it's still going to do what? Shake the damn building. Mark the building out of here. Shows. Now, being he's been, I'm going to give it to Pusha on, 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 on giving it to the crowd on his show, his showmanship too. Because once again, once you've been in a tandem, your chemistry and your flow and how you deal with the crowd is totally different because you're bouncing off somebody else. Then you take that skill set and apply it totally on yourself. You know how to control the crowd even more because it's you have to balance your energy on somebody else. Now it's all your energy controlling the crowd. You know what I mean? So I'm going to have to push it too. So once again, push it. Hands down. 30. Push. Yeah. All right, so I guess it goes down to me. Fight for your boy, Pat. Fight for your boy. All right. So, um, once again, yes, I am from Virginia. I am from the exact area code that Pusha T is from. Mm -hmm. I have seen Pusha T in his music career since the beginning. Since they've been out here with the funeral, that first song. Or whatever that came out when I was in high school. I've 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 been out there. I actually helped promote some of his stuff out here, like especially the. Um, I still got that first mixtape. You got it for cheap. They had out here, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, in most cases, I'm gonna have a Virginia bias, but at the same time. Just like with other artists, shoot, ironically, just like Lil Wayne, I grew into liking Pusher. At first, I was looking at him, ironically, just like y'all looking at Conway. He's just another street rapper that talks about drug dealing. Boy, Pat is <laughs> pretty a much. critic, boy. Pretty much. Especially when it comes to this rap stuff. So, let me get right down to it. Marketability. I'm giving it to Pusha. It, there's just, I mean, I mean, Conway is my boy, but Pusha has been on songs with Justin Timberlake. His main producer is Pharrell. <laughs> there's no like that. I would be stupid to say to say anybody it, Conway in this situation because Pusha T in his career. Just in general, Pharrell, he runs Kanye's freaking um, record label and everything. Like, he's gotten some achievements over the years. He's actually pushed the culture in certain ways with style and clothing and, and everything with the bait and everything. Like, he got some imprint on, on hip hop. So, marketability, I'm giving it push. Lyricism. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna wait. Okay. I'm gonna wait. No, I'm gonna go right into it. Lyricism. Lyricism. Yes, Pusha has been around for a while. I give him that. But I feel like he's just now gotten to that level where when I hear something, I'm like, oh shoot, let me run that back. Wow. I've been listening to I've been listening to Conway and the Machine. Since they became, they came out like about five years ago, um, underground, like was it 2014, 2000? I'm like one of the first people that actually probably even heard about them or whatever. These men, Conway on his own, come out with an album, will come out with a project three times a year, at least three times a year, and that's six, at least. I mean, I would say two of them probably have like maybe seven at the least tracks up there. Then he has one major, and in one of those three are uh, one major project. So two albums two, a year, basically. Two two albums a year, one EP. So three three projects, at least three projects a year. And that's not including group projects, pretty much. And mm-hmm. they have been doing this for the past consecutively past four or five years. 
mm-hmm. or whatever. I have not heard a rhyme where all right, I made. Are you forgetting the re-up game? I'm not. I'm and saying that, and that run that they went on when it was a mixtape every other damn week. I'm. 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 I, like I said, I was there with that mixtape era, where it says when when I'm uh, when it was I got it for cheap, pretty much. I'm just saying. What's your lyricism? What's your lyricism argument for Conway? I feel like you're trying to make an argument for Conway here. Go ahead, and make. It. I want to hear this. His bars hit harder, man. In what His way? Bars, it bars hit harder. Like I like I can. Like, what specifically, technically, from a technical aspect, does he do better than Pusha T? Specifically, yeah. I would say his just he comes out with lines and bars m- way more on each verse than I can from a push. So verse. you're going from a quantity aspect. He has as a, a lot, quantity a aspect. A lot of as, bars. There's a lot of bars. Yeah. I'm not. See, I'm okay, more so, for quality. I, now I understand. Quantity. Now, as far as like music, musically or whatever, I will give it a push of tea. This and a third, but as far as like I'm going as far as bar for bar lyricism, I'm going to give it to Conway because I just feel like he just now Respect. got it to. And as far as as far as the battle aspect to it, yes, he battled Drake. We can't even include Drake in this conversation though. All right, so let's talk about somebody like Lil Wayne or whatever. But at the same time, it's like Lil Wayne couldn't even, like, under the rules of Birdman, he couldn't even really respond back in that situation. So, yeah, and I, I mean, and then when I look at Conway or whatever, I don't think it's like many rappers that would want to battle him, period. So I'm going to defend him on that. Now, as far as stage <laughs> performance... <laughs> Now, stage performance, I'm going to give it the push just because he's been on too many stages. He's been on way too many stages of all sorts, of all varieties or whatever. When when we talk about versatility, I will give it on the stage performance side and, and marketability side or whatever. Stage performance, I'm giving it the push of T or whatever. Okay. So yeah, I, yeah. So in this round I'm probably is push a T, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> but, you said all that to say that, boy. Come on home to Virginia, because the pod squad I, agree, agree with you. I'm Virginia, so it's a and I mean, I, victory, first five and I, of the night. I can't Go say push. too much because I know <sighs> too many people that's connected with Pusha. <laughs> if they heard this, it's like, how are you going to vote against Pusha? Or I mean, but <laughs> I feel like Pusha would even say, would even put up a case for Conway. Much. <laughs> I doubt it. Have you heard a Pusha I interview? Don't... He don't seem like the most. Uh, no, he don't, he I'm, don't I'm lack saying arrogance. And uh, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't talking about. I ain't talking about against him. I'm talking about as far oh, as okay. bars. Like yeah. I can. We're I not think saying I'm saying Conway and Elite with the bars. We just saying against Pusher. Yeah. He ain't fucking nah, good. nah. Nah, nah. I'm just you saying, don't cut him out, man. You don't. start speaking up at some point. I was, you had me lost for a second there. But um, I mean, just, it's still your thought, I man. actually Come don't even know how down. we got to this next, this next uh, bracket here. We got Schoolboy Q versus Boy <laughs> 5 back. Let me go first. Let me just speak by speech. Lyric, lyricism, it ain't even close. All right. Mm-hmm. We're not about to sit here and play around with Royce the Five Nine name. I ain't even about to do his name like that. I don't care what happened with him and Lupe or, while, or him and uh Mickey. Royce is what he is. Um mm-hmm. he's one of the reasons Eminem is so great from sparring with him. Like mm-hmm. So, so so let's just clear that up. Royce is top tier. He's one of the 
I wouldn't put him in the God tier, but he's like in that tier right below it. Like he's neck. He's, a deep, he's, he's made. He's getting his way up there. Like he can fight with a titan. He ain't quite a titan, but he a guy. He he he, he can he can reach up and he punch one guy. off. You know they they feel his effects. So I'm gonna definitely say lyricism, Royce. Stage presence, I'm gonna give the schoolboy. Uh, MCing ability, like the ability to rock a show. I feel like schoolboy. He be having them crowds lit. So it goes down to marketability. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as this to me. That shady bag, different champ. Mm-hmm. Now I feel I'm gonna say it like this: in the past year, whose name have you heard of more? I'm gonna say Royce. Mm-hmm. His album sales, um, decent. Um, he's had a gold album or two here and there, you know. Um, he's definitely done his thing with Slaughterhouse, um, but he has more albums to sell than Schoolboy. Um, as far as touring, I think they're pretty neck and neck as far as where they hit. Um, they both have their own specific festival circuit that they hit. They also have their own pretty decent. They're, they're about at the same size crowd as far as the venues that they pack outside of festivals. Um, and I think... Yeah, I honestly don't know internationally. I feel like it depends on the country or something. I, I don't even know internationally, so I feel like I'll just put it as a watch there. But marketability, that shady bag is different. It's different. Mm-hmm. It's different. So I would just go schoolboy Q there. I mean, a Royce to five nine there. So I went Royce. Um, yeah, I went Royce. It wasn't even – it wasn't like a deep – conversation for me it was like oh yeah two out of the three Royce yeah easy yeah either one of you could take the floor now I'll let um, you go back all right it's about the same lyricism of course is Royce to listen to Royce since high school <laughs> or whatever but I've been listening to Schoolboy Q since it came out he's been one of my like out of the newer rappers or whatever, he's been one of my favorites, pretty much. Whatever. But um, lyricism, Royce. Stage performance, I'm going to give it the schoolboy. Um, but marketing is definitely Royce. They damn near got the same company as the marketing, but he's Eminem's homeboy. It's different different yeah like Ken schoolboy is Kendrick's homeboy it's different yeah yeah like I'm not saying Kendrick is not I listen to more Kendrick now mind you I was an Eminem fan when when he first came out I listen to more Kendrick now I feel like it's more relatable than I do Eminem but I remember what Eminem did and I remember who was there along the way, <laughs> pretty much. And yeah, yeah. So I'm giving it to Royce. Plus, Royce got mm. premiere as one of his favorite, as as one of his main producers. Like Ugh. that's a Ugh. Uh, the lyrics that those beats uh, inspire are always very epic. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Face yeah, mob, two albums. Yeah. Um, lyrics, of course. Royce. Of course. Of course. Hands down. Royce. He's a lyrical demigod, as I said before. Um, marketability. Ah. Don't know. International scale. Don't know. Don't know. National scale. I don't know either. Because you got a wide variety of like both people. Um, so I'm going to skip that for right now and go to stage performance. Okay. Once again, once again, school boy rocks the crowd, man. Get them going. Royce, um, I feel like his core fans will, will be more into it, but on a more wide scale, no. So I'm going to say school boy, get it to his fans a little bit more. 
his performance and the ability to rock the crowd and command the crowd. Um, so we go back to that marketability, man, because right now it's one to one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like you say, that shady bag is a little different. But once again, it's the shady bag. And we're looking at the marketability of the individual themselves. Um, if he didn't have the backing of shady, what would be his true marketability? And if there is no Kendrick Lamar, what's the true marketability of Schoolboy Q? Um, if we look at it just like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with Schoolboy because when you think Royce, you think you think Shady. When you think Schoolboy, you think Schoolboy. You don't automatically think Kendrick. Um, it's yeah, two sure. separate entities. So I'm going to go marketability for Schoolboy. So two to one, Schoolboy for me, but I know most okay. of he didn't win. Well, the pod squad definitely did vote against you, but it was, uh, I think it was like 2-1. So, pod squad <laughs> takes it over the top. It's 4-1 Royce. Royce moves on. Royce will be facing Pusha T next week. These ne- ne- Next week is going to be interesting. Next week, we're gonna, it's going to be interesting. But, um... Yeah. So we got the last, the first half of that bracket done. All right, let's get through these ones, guys. Um, one, next, once again, next people, one is, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, once again, people, we're not just talking about, because I know there's going to be a lot of extra hip hop heads you want to be thinking. We're not just talking about lyricism or whatever. So We're not just talking about lyricism. Total. It's just one part of it. There's one part of it. Now, if Indeed. it was just lyricism, I think these brackets this would, look would different. be a lot different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. They just want to put that out. It might have even been some other people that would have been added that I would have added to this list that mm-hmm. our initial list that would have been considered that mm-hmm. I did not just because I knew it was all three facets. And I was going to say honorable mentions that I realized after a while, after hearing some music, um, J-Rock and Tyler, the creator. I heard Tyler, the creator, go in on this song on West Side Gun. And I'm like, oh, shit, I have not heard you do this in a while. <laughs> so I'm going to just throw this up there. I just Googled it while we was on the phone. Net worth, Royce the 5'9", net worth $3 million. Ooh, boy, Q, work, net worth. Four million dollars. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. I ain't heard shit about Schoolboy Q all year. I heard about Royce the Five Nine last month. That's because they wait for this Kendrick. Shit. They wait for okay. Kendrick and SZA. Okay. But I gotta. I'm just gonna put it there. Um. But in our next round, we got Joe Budden versus Killer Mike. Um, hmm. I'm gonna just be Let me with mine. I'm gonna just go ahead and throw mine out there. I picked Joe Budden. Um, I feel like lyrically, they're close, but Joe Budden has a wider place that he can go. And I honestly just think Joe Budden's a better lyricist overall. Um, stage presence, I gave it to Killer Mike. Um, I feel like his presence is just it. It's it's like he has one of the presidents like that even if he ain't rapping, he just walk into a room and he commands the energy toward him. Mm-hmm. So like and he's that's one of those. Right. So um he definitely takes it there. Um and then marketability. Joe Budden is Joe Budden. Like Joe Budden is an international name. People know him, whether you know right his song or not, you know him. Pump it up is an international that like, they use it to it's a jock jam. When you mm-hmm. reach when you reach them type of levels with a song. Whether you, your albums are as famous or not, your marketability is through the roof. So Joe Budden, I gave it, so I gave it to Joe Budden, 2-1, easy money. Hey, I'll go quick. I fucking hate Joe Budden, man. Um, just wanted to say that first. I fucking hate Joe Budden. Um, but lyrically, he got him. I hate to say it, but lyrically, he got him. But hands down, Killer Mike stomps him on the stage. The delivery, the command of the stage, the command of the people. Yeah, it's all Killer Mike, man. It's all Killer Mike. So it all boils down to the fucking marketability. God damn if I ain't have to give it to Joe. 
Pump, pump, pump the fuck up himself. Pump, 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 pump it up, to. just please. Didn't want to, but with the category, <laughs> gotta be real, gotta be true. No bias there, because once again, I fucking hate Joe Button. But lyrically and marketability, he, he, he outshines Killer Mike, so I guess my vote's for fucking Joe Button. Pow! All right. Man, this is funny. <laughs> it face is funny as fuck. Or whatever. Mind you now, people, this is all bias. So my personal opinion or whatever is actually stricken to the side on certain on this thing or whatever. Uh, all right. Lyricism, Joe Button just because he has a lot more content and i feel like he actually has a lot of i think he actually sparked a lot of rappers on the low um expressing themselves about life situations and emotions on the low or whatever just he was like one of those first rappers in an age of drug rappers to actually talk about hey this is how i feel about this situation and i'm going through this so yeah, at the same time while Kanye is saying it, um, stage present Killer Mike because it's fucking Killer Mike. Th- his voice alone, as soon as he says something, Killer, ki- it's over with. You're gonna listen to him. Joe Budden has, he has the fabulous syndrome where even if he's probably saying it with expression or whatever, it still has that I'm cocky and everything I'm going to say is going to sound hard, so you're going to like my shit anyway type voice to it, pretty much. Um, So that leads down to marketability and I I, I feel sorry for Killer, but it's Joe Button. Joe Button, it literally started half of the social media like the social media behavior that we have out here. Good and bad. Like he's one of the first people to just put his regular life on on the internet. He gave whatever. Vlad TV a start by mistake. Yeah, he hates Vlad for yeah. <laughs> with a passion, and I think that has to do with him and Ransom and that past previous thing from what I've I've seen. But man, like I fucking hate you. Hey, like it's I ain't mean, love or hate or bad. He's he's a bit of innovator. He's a bit of an innovator. And there's certain things, man, he get on my nerves about a certain thing, but at the same time, like... I hate the nigga's beard. <laughs> it's just that you just don't like that nigga because you don't like that nigga. So who was your pick that? Him. Joe Budden. I hate his beard. Okay. He with his mustache. And the pod squad picked him, him as well, so that's the first, uh, the second 5-0 victory we've had tonight. It's a word. Three left. We get to J. Cole versus Beanie Siegel. Now, this is tough because they kind of were in two different eras of the 2000s. Um, Beanie just squeaked in as a 2000s rapper just because his album was released at the very top of the year 2000. Um, So he kind of ran the early 2000s, whereas J. Cole has kind of come in during the 2010s and kind of been a major fixture there. So, yeah, it's kind of era against era within the 2000s. Um, I'm going to say lyrically. Say, say J. Cole. Um, yeah. I, J. Cole has... Been, Mac is my guy. Don't get me wrong. There was a time when Beanie Mac was, could do no wrong. But even in Beans' own crew, state property, he wasn't my favorite. P.D. Crack was. So, like, if you weren't even my favorite in your own crew, lyrically, it's kind of hard for me to put you over a dude that is the my top dude in his crew. Um, also, like, at no point when Beans was out did I ever put him as, like, one of the top rappers out at that time. J. Cole, I would put up there, like if somebody came to me with an argument against Jay-Z and said J. Cole, I would ha- I would have that conversation with him viably. Not having that conversation with you about J and B. Just not. 
Um, so like I think lyrically, J. Cole wins. Stage presence, I give it to Beans. Um, his believability is just ridiculous. He does an interview, and I'm like enthralled. Like I just want to hear him say more. Like, so I feel like that aura just goes a long way with his stage presence. And I I've seen his concerts, man. It's it's a different vibe to see that many people singing his verse from even though what we do is wrong. But that, like, they yeah, still play it to it's different. Day. It's different. Um, so I gave that to Beanie. And then marketability during their times. This is where it gets tough. But I feel like during their times, J. Cole's marketability is crazy off the fact that he has social media as a push. Beans was completely relying on Rockefeller to push him. But he, to my knowledge, doesn't have a certified platinum album while he was actually active rapping. J. Cole does, and he did it without even having a commercial for the shit. Like, literally, motherfuckers went to sleep and woke up and the album was here and that shit went everywhere. Mm -hmm. All off the fact of social media and him building that buzz and him building that connection with his fans is, like, really organic. So I feel like he has an advantage. But advantage or not, he's bigger. Like, yeah. So J. Cole wins to me 2-1. I had J. Cole. Well... J. Cole, J. Cole, and Beans, Beanie Siegel. Tough match, tough match. Early 2000s, late 2000s, like you said, two different generations, two different type of styles, but you still got to have a conversation. So I'm going to start with stage flow, stage presence, some ability to control the crowd, get your message out. I'm going to give that one to Beans. Um, but I attribute that to his era as well. Um, you had to you you had to have some type of stage presence. You you had to sell it. You you had to bring that authenticity back then. Um, when now you can rely more on on the technology and other things and background and a lot more a, a lot more other elements. So just on the authenticity and pure energy that Beans brought and the fans fed off that. And like I said, to this day, when you wrap that Beans verse, you will wrap that with that energy. You feel me? So I'm going to get at the Beans. Um, marketability. Um, I'm going to say J. Cole. Um his reach is a lot wider in his prime and Beans' prime. Um, Beans' reach was attributed to the clique he was attached to. Um, rather it was Rockefeller or State, probably he was always seen with a clique. So him being known on a wide scale, sure you know Beans, but you know State probably too. Um, I don't even know the name of J. Crew, uh, excuse me, J. Cole's um, crew, or if he even has one, but I know about J. Cole himself. You feel me? So that wide reach he has, of him, like him himself, can touch more ears and more households than beings because of his prime. So that's that. Now, lyrically, that's a tough conversation. Um, they both got different ways to get their message out artistically. And they can both articulate on a different level. Um, in a group setting, we've seen what Beans can do on features and duets and all that other shit. We've also seen what J. Cole can do on his features, his solo, and with a group as well. On standalone, I'm going to give it to J. Cole. Feature wise, I give it to Beans because when Beans on the feature, he just comes differently. His lyrical prowess on the feature is a little bit different than when he comes by himself. 
But then you gotta look at the body of work. How many features did you have to match up to a solo a solo career like him standing on his own? So lyrically, with what he can do, where he's at in his career, and the amount of time he still has to mature, I'm gonna give it to J. Cole. Because what he's done so far lyrically is outstanding. And he's not been in the game for so long. At the same amount of time Beans have been in the game, I don't think he had reached that lyrical prowess. So I'm gonna get at the J. Cole. Two, one. Okay. Pat. All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm giving it to Cole. Y'all already really explained the reasons why. But I want to be clear, whatever. Beans, Beans is the guy that got one over on Jada Kiss. This is, is true. Not I feel like being supposed to be in the category in, in the same school as with Jada Kiss or whatever, but because of the stipulations that we have, he's in the 2000 or whatever. Got a man caught outside like, of his time. Yeah, basically. I think he was, and I think that's generally what happened with his career. He's a man caught outside of his time. Like, I feel like lyrically, Beanie Siegel's is up there with anybody, but where he may lack at or fall short at, J. Cole will pick up at pretty much as far as like with beans with his lifestyle, it ain't but so much he's going as far as the realm of music he's gonna go. Like he don't get me wrong, he has he has music that reach out to everybody. I can feel it in the air and stuff like that, but at the same time, if you're a regular person, you're not going to feel the drug dealer music, but so much. Unless you're me, because I'm weird and I grew up on just hardcore rap anyway, so I listen to all kinds of rap. But I just feel like Beans in his career fell short. Um, just off of his personality and J. Cole is the result of what happens when J has a artist and and what he could do to that artist to his best extent or whatever. Like like J. Cole J. Cole has albums by himself that are plat. You know what I'm saying? Like he got his own fan base. He's not trying to portray an image or whatever and the people in it people that would normally you consider like gangster rappers or street rappers they all give him respect like they all you know what i'm saying like all around from the nerd all all genres to the people that like nerd rap to the people that just like street rap like to the people that like emotional life situations or whatever he covers all that so i give it to j cole beanie siegel i will say as far as stage presence yeah i'm, I'm i agree with y'all with that like as far as stage presence but at the same time j cole's stage show is getting better and better pretty much but that's all i gotta say j cole indeed, indeed. and, <clears> and my brother my third 5-0 winner of the night and my and my brother voted for j cole too ah Thank you for voting there, brother, brother. That's his favorite rapper, so. I'm not mad at him. Well, he's going to have to show up for him again next week because he's going to need help. Uh, Because what's he facing? Yeah, next week he's going against Joe Button. So the J against the J. Hmm. That ought to be a good one. Yeah. Some different angles to take as far as at least the breakdowns. Um, but in our second to the last matchup of the night, we got Big Sean versus Chance the Rapper. Um, Pat, you want to go first here? I'm going with Big Sean. Okay. Don't, I'm going with Big Sean. <laughs> that was confident. <laughs> I'm going with Big Sean. I get really – all right. Marketability. I'm going like, to – marketability, I, I feel like – Chance may have him a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? But 
Um, lyrically, I pick Big Sean. And as far as stage performance, I pick Big Sean. I, I'm at a bias mostly because Chance the Rapper voice kind of gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> Just in general. But at the same time, I've heard him say he got this line on this song with Action Bronson or whatever, like when he was going in. I actually put it on the thing, but uh, Chance the Rapper music annoys me a little bit more. It's way too happy. It's, it's, it's just way too fucking happy, man. Like he's a, he's a great lyricist, and I know you know for some people he makes great music, man. But it just it's not for me, man. It's too happy. I'm going for Big Sean. Big Sean gives me all, gives me everything. He checks the boxes more than, for you. Yeah, uh, more than understood. Face? I don't like neither one of these niggas' music. <laughs> well, okay. Be honest with you. I mean, I don't really fuck with Chance Rapper at all, but his marketability is Mr. Dorito. So, um, yeah. He has the hat. He, he's very marketable. He got that show on Netflix with T.I. and um, Cardi B. Um, he got the commercial with the boy band. So, I mean, his crossover ability is very, very high. Um, so that's that. He, he getting money, do his travel thing, but that's not in the qualification. Um, his marketability, yeah, chance. Um, basically, I'll come back to that because, once again, I don't like me one of these motherfuckers. Um, stage presence. Uh, shit, it's a toss up between the two because they both bring energy to their stage presence with their type of music, um, different different areas, but flows are uh, I'm not gonna say similar, but similarly unique. I'll say that. Um, I'll give it a check. I'll give it. No, excuse me. I'll give it the big show on stage presence. Command of the flow, command of the crowd, ability to deliver that message there. Um, lyrically, really don't listen to you on these motherfuckers. Um, shit. I've I've heard more Big Sean music that I really can't listen to a rapper that long. His voice, it's uh, it's highly annoying. I told you. That's in my See? opinion. That's in my opinion. I just In mine too. To a, I, I really can't. Um, I really can't say I, I've never heard Chance say anything memorable for me, but I've heard Big Sean say a few things more memorable. Um, I can't remember them now, but if I heard the song, I could say I could sing along with it. Where a Chance the Rapper song, I'm I'm not even singing along with it. I'm just got it on because it's on. Um, so I'm going to go Big Sean. Oh. Two, one. I bet you remember this. I don't fuck with you. <laughs> I have Damn, big right. Song. <laughs> Damn right. Damn right. Hey, he was snapping on that song. He was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I heard well, you I'll be the outnumbered <laughs> party here. I picked Chance to Rap. Um, so, like, lyrically, he said more mind blowing things than me. Um, or more things that I just thought were like, oh, fuck, that was amazing. He gives me the type of bars that I like, which are those that are right, the low-hanging fruit, but nobody sees the branch. Um, yeah, he's good at that. My daughter looked just like Sia. You can't see her. Um, you know, shit like that just... I love shit like that, you know. Treat your, treat your friend just like Pam. Oh, treat, treat your homie just like Pam. I mean, I fuck with your friends, but damn, Gina, like... I don't know. I like shit like that. It, it it's my type of shit. Um, I feel like he he's more versatile because he hasn't boxed himself into any one place. So he could talk about drug use the same way he could talk about being a Christian, the same way he could talk about uh, having some dreadhead niggas in your lobby. Um, marketability, it ain't even close. Chance is everywhere. Chance chance is up there with like the Drakes and people like that of the world as far as marketability. And then uh, stage presence. I prefer a stage show of Chance the Rapper as far as his type of energy and the way he's interacting with the crowd. Um, I like the way he gives you different nuances from where he'll slow it down, kind of give you one of those, 
uh, more introspective songs like the John he got with Daniel Caesar. And then he'll bring it back up with a young one, no problems. Then he'll bring it back to a religious place with the, his verse from Ultra Like Me. Like he has more places he can go and pour range in his stage show that he gives you. So yeah, it was easy for me. Chance three, all three criteria, chance three. But I was outnumbered by you guys and the pod squad because they picked Big Sean as well. So 4-1, fucking Big Sean. I would say if Chance and Voice was so annoying, <laughs> I would probably like him a lot more because I've heard him go in. It's all just, right, people. It's all I good because we're about to get to the same thing for me right now. Nicki Minaj versus 2 Chains, the last of the second round. Um, this places our last person in the quarterfinal round, which is going to be held next week. That'll be voted on all of this coming week between today, Tuesday, and next Tuesday. So, um, let me go first. Yeah, get this shit out the way. Um, Nick Minaj, two chains, man. Um, lyrically, I'm going two chains. They both have stood the test of time. They both stood up against people that only God tier. Um, and hell their own. But two chain to me is just an innovator of the wordplay. Like, god damn it, shit he says just like, what did you just say that? What? So I'm, I'm gonna give it to him. Um, marketability. Ugh. Them damn barbs. <laughs> but two chain, man. But two chain. They're both known internationally. But Two Chains' marketability takes him to other places that Nicki Minaj's attitude won't allow her to go. <clears throat> Two Chains has different TV shows. You feel me? Like the the world's most expensive shit. That shit he does. The marketability gets him in a different arena. Sure, her fame can get her in a different arena. But his attitude and his marketability open up other doors for Two Chains. That I don't think Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj can open. So marketability, I'm gonna give it two chains. Stage performance, sure. Who doesn't like seeing that woman shake her ass? But I'm not to. I'm not at a rap show just to see that. So I'm like, I'm there for the full, <clears throat> the full and beyond. It ain't all about just shaking your ass. If you you're just looking at that, any female rapper would have a better stage performance commanding the crowd. It's just about that. But it's not just about your body. It's not just about your dance moves. It's about the whole show. And I'm going to give it to 2 Chain for the whole show because I believe he brings something different with his show. I mean, just his personality, once again, it, it exudes out of him on his, with his show. So I feel like the crowd feels that more. I'm going to go to 2 Chain. I believe he's just 30, Nicki Minaj. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll go next. This was easy for me. Um, outside of market, like marketability was the only close one for me. Stage show, two chains, hands down. He's give he'll give you acapella moments. He he'll dance. He'll crowd surf. He'll give you rock and roll style moments. He'll give you more introspective slow down moments. He'll give you the sing along moments. He'll give you moments where he's just barn heavy. Nicki Minaj to me is all sing songy sing-along moments and shaking her ass outside of those two things aspects her stage show is not that great to me um marketability uh lyricism two chains to me they, they have a similar similar style it's a lot of heavy metaphors and simile play um as far as syllable work though i think two chains jumps into more pockets there um he's more versatile as far as the lyric type like He's not reliant on certain similar, I saying the same catchphrase, you my sons, you my sons, you my, like I'm tired of hearing about Nicki Minaj's sons, mm. that, that shit is redundant. Um, so two chains, one there for me and then marketability, it was very close, but like Faith said, the attitude is what changed it for me. Um, I feel like two chains has been in, involved in more marketing campaigns, more shows, more opportunities, and a lot of it is due simply 
to his attitude. I feel like Nicki Minaj has probably had more chance to do these opportunities, but as far as who's actually made it through and followed through and we've actually seen as a part of these things, I feel like two chains is ahead. So, yeah. 30. All right. So it's my turn. And you know what? It's your guys? time to shine. I am going with Nicki Minaj because she has some ass shots. I'm joking. I'm not going with Nicki Minaj. I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It. Yo, she appealed to your two- anaconda in one, huh? Got it. Yeah, they hey, hey. The anaconda don't want nothing. All right, that's enough of that. Pretty much. <laughs> that's enough of that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> two chain. Right. Marketability. I'm going to give it to Nicki Minaj because the barbs reign supreme. But everything else is 2 chains. Stage presence, 2 chains. I actually... I'm, man, 2 chains cool, man. Every time I've actually seen him in per- person, he's been the coolest person. Like When he was with the Duffel Bad Boys or whatever, I was promoting and I actually promoted, got him to... They followed me to the club where he's supposed to perform and everything. It was just like, hey man, get fucked up. Here it goes. It's on me. <laughs> so it's all around a cool person. And then cool chains. Same, same thing. I was like, cool was chains. Him, that time I went to Atlanta, I randomly was in a club and he was there and he just passed blocks. And I was in the VIP. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, all right, thank you, sir. I wouldn't do that now because of COVID, but yeah. The other main reason why. This is the main no reason. Longs. Why I picked two chains. Two chains can go on anybody's song. He is Frank's. He's period. the Frank's red hot sauce of hip hop. <clears throat> Put that shit on anything. Two chains could be on Ti, Lil Wayne. He could be on an Outkast song. Of course, Ludacris. He's been on Ludacris song or whatever. But rap. not just that. Not just that. Other rappers, other regions. Chance the rapper. He's been. On um Gucci on songs with Kendrick Gucci Big Gip. Big Gip. Not only that, not only that, he's also been on songs with rappers you don't expect him to be on, like Fabulous, Jada uh-huh. West Side Gun. He was just on West Side Gun on. He was just on Benny's album. Shit, I think he was on Conway's too. I think he was on all three of them niggas now. <laughs> Pretty much. Like he's been on. He, I will catch a random two chains verse on albums I would not expect a two chains vo- verse on. Too many Period. verses. Period. He don't care who you are. If you underground, he'll put a verse up there. If, you, if you're underground, you like it, put a verse up there. If you West Coast, it don't matter. He fits on everything. So that's why I picked two chains. Two chains. Tony with the, with the five zero victory because that was also the pod squad's choice as well. So it wasn't just us, folks. The pod squad chose this as well. And if you disagree Tony. or you want to have your voice heard in this coming week's bracket, as you can see, coming up this next week in the quarterfinals, we got Kendrick Lamar <clears throat> versus Rick Ross, Pusha T versus Royce the Five Nine, Joe Budden versus J. Cole, and Big Sean versus Two Chains. If you want to have your voice heard, all you got to do is click the link in the description below on this week's podcast. Also, this will be on posted to our social media, the link to our uh, poll. It's the same link as last <laughs> week. So if you voted last week, go right back to that same link. The round two is open as of right now. As you are hearing these words come from my mouth, round two is available. So go ahead, click that link from last week. Um, but yeah, get your votes in so that your two votes can be added to ours and you can break our ties or break our, uh, you know, discrepancies. As you can see tonight already, um, yeah, we kind of were along the lines of the pod squad, but I, some of us definitely got outvoted. And next week, the debate will be even tougher because we get into the big dogs, the top eight will now be whittled down to this final four. So get your votes in, Pod Squad. Get your votes in. Click the link in the description below. Check out our social media sites. You will have the link there. 
and vote, 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 share the content, vote some more, and vote. Share, yeah, engage. And that is this week's edition and round of the top MC of 2000s going into the quarterfinals next week.